Greetings traders and welcome back to another In-Depth with Chris Guide. In today's discussion, we will be talking about what happens after you finally get that big sack of cash and you get your funding here at Earned a Trade. We're gonna cover everything that it entails to be a funded trader and what rules we might instill or not need to adhere to after. We're gonna go through all of that as well as how the withdrawal process works and all that good stuff, so make sure you stick around. But before we get going, please do me a favor, and if you haven't already, click that like and subscribe button down below because it allows me to keep coming out with content for you all out there. Without further ado, let's get going. So congratulations, if you're watching this video, chances are you've passed the Gauntlet Mini. But if you haven't and you're watching this video anyway, make sure you check out the Gauntlet Mini Challenge. It's an opportunity to trade with someone else's money while still earning profits from that money. It gives you a chance to risk someone else's money but make your own money. It's a pretty sweet opportunity. But after we pass, we need to know how everything works. And that's exactly what we're going to cover. And the first thing that everybody always asks is, how is my profit split up? What is in it for me and what is in it for the person giving me the money? So let's talk about that profit sharing. The profit sharing heavily favors the trader here at Earn to Trade. We do our profit split as 80-20. That means out of $100 of profit that you make, you're going to bring home $80 with money that was never even yours to trade with to begin with. It is money that is provided to you by the proprietary trading firm that you get to trade with, with the risk being theirs and you maintaining 80% of all profits generated with that money. So if you maintain the discipline, you've gotten used to the Gauntlet Mini Challenge itself and you've begun trading profitably after being funded, all of that money is going to be an 80-20 split, meaning 80% is yours, 20% is theirs. Once the time to withdraw comes, let's talk about how that process works. So the first thing is to understand that we can really put in our order to withdraw at any time, assuming that we have a positive account balance. Now the minimum amount that we can withdraw is just a small $100. And considering the account sizes that we offer here at Earn to Trade, $100 is a very, very small fraction of the amount of money that you'll be trading with. The withdrawals are available through a bank wire transfer and direct ACH deposit and the withdrawals are processed every Tuesday. Any transaction fees are covered by the proprietary trading firm for withdrawals of over $500. These fees can vary although they are generally somewhere between $30 to $40 maximum. More importantly, any brokerage fees owed such as monthly data fees are also deducted during the withdrawal process to make it easy and simple on the trader so there's no extra math or process by the trader that they have to employ after withdrawing their money. Don't worry, if you've paid them ahead of time, they won't even be deducted. So if you pay them ahead of time, that's another good thing for you. Everything you withdraw is just going to you. Once we are trading on a funded trading account, it's very common for traders to ask if the rules they had to follow while trading during the Gauntlet Mini Challenge still apply to their funded trading account. Now, before we answer this, let's think about this question for a moment. Why would we look to change the rules if they allowed us to power through the Gauntlet Mini Challenge to begin with? The rules are not there to hinder a trader. They're not there set as a trap. They're there to help the trader maintain profit profits to a consistent degree. Whether it's a virtual or live trading account, the key to success is discipline. Yes, breathe a sigh of relief. Once you have passed the Gauntlet Mini Challenge and you have your own funded trading account, you may not have to follow all of the rules, but this is only the beginning and it's important to understand that the rules that you use to pass are usually valuable for any type of trading thereafter. The rules are mostly the same when trading as a funded trader as they are when you take the Gauntlet Mini challenge itself. Because the proprietary trading firm providing the funds takes on all of the financial risks, your account will have a few safeguards that are imposed on them in order to protect the firm's capital. This is meant to guard against situations where traders successfully pass the evaluation, then for some reason can't just handle the real money event and all of a sudden try to blow up the account. 
The first thing we'll talk about is Drawdown. The number one safeguard is the Drawdown. Much like your Gauntlet Mini account, your funded trading account will also include a trailing Drawdown. Similar to the evaluation, it will stop trailing once the Drawdown threshold value, which is the balance where your account gets liquidated, reaches your starting balance. So once the drawdown reaches the starting balance, it stays there, it doesn't continue to follow. So if you're doing extremely well, the drawdown rule may not even be something that you ever encounter if your account has grown to high degrees of profit. If we look at the $50,000 account as an example, the drawdown listed is $2,000 currently. That means after our balance reaches $52,000, our drawdown stops trailing. After that, your drawdown threshold stays exactly at $50,000. That's because $2,000 backwards from $52,000 brings us to the starting account balance of $50,000. This means that if we were to increase our account balance to say $100,000, the trailing drawdown will still be way back down at $50,000 because that is the starting account balance. No matter how high our account goes, the drawdown will still stop at our starting account balance. Now there are other rules that we should talk about as well, and initially our funded trading account also starts with a daily loss limit just like the Gauntlet Mini. The difference is that unlike during the evaluation, for the funded trading account this rule is only temporary. Once your trailing drawdown stops trailing like we just talked about, our daily loss limit is permanently removed. The rules concerning approved times and maximum position size, including the progression ladder though, do remain the same. The only new rule added to the mix is that our account will get terminated after an unscheduled absence of five consecutive trading days. This rule serves a crucial purpose. Capital provided to traders by the prop trading firm cannot be allocated anywhere else. That's why they have an interest in preventing traders from simply claiming their funded account and not doing anything with it. It's also critical to the point that the unscheduled portion of this phrase is important to pay attention to because when we say unscheduled, that means that it's only if we aren't told that there will be an absence. If you let the firm know that you will be out of town or you won't be able to trade for a period of time, they will work with you. But the key is communication. Don't just blindly leave without telling anyone anything because beyond five days without any communication and no trading, they will close the account. So what costs are you responsible for after getting funded? There really aren't many. We have two to talk about here. Once we're funded with a proprietary trading firm, we no longer need to pay any subscription fees for the Gauntlet Mini in our case. On the other hand, we will need to pay for the monthly data fees that are a pass-through fee directly from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange for providing the live data. This is unavoidable for any type of trader. Data fees are $105 per month currently and they must be paid by you out of pocket from your credit card. The first month is usually charged immediately once your funded trading account is created. Then you get charged at the end of every calendar month for the next month in advance. That's why we generally recommend starting with only one exchange at first to keep your costs as low as possible and only adding more once you've built your account up to a substantial balance and you feel that it's worth paying for the extra data. We also suggest not starting your funded trading account near the end of the month. That way you don't get charged for both the first and second month right away at the same time. If you already have a data feed of your own for charting and simply want to execute on the prop firm's feed, you do not need to subscribe to their data feed and will not incur any additional data costs. In addition, unless you're using a free trading platform itself, you will be responsible naturally for your own platform fees, whatever it is that you're using. Of course, the proprietary trading firm isn't going to cover your platform fees. Most of the traders who take the evaluation already have their own platform licenses, so they don't need to purchase a new one when they get funded, but if you do, you will be responsible for it. The Finamark platform also comes with a three-month free access for all of the traders that get funded at Earned trade. So that's another cheap alternative to getting into the funded space and keeping your costs low, especially for that first three months. If you're looking for an outright free platform for life, then we recommend taking a look at RTrader Pro, which costs nothing for the entirety of its use. Another common question that we get is, is there a profit ceiling? Is there a cap? 
on how much money you can make. Well, if you stick to the rules and stay above the trailing drawdown limit set by your starting account size, there is no upper ceiling. There is no upper limit on how much you can make. That being said, don't expect to get rich quick. That's a poor trading mentality. Although slowly building up your trading account and showing restraint may seem tedious, traders who pass the gauntlet mini can confidently say that this method works better than doing otherwise. And as we mentioned, the key factor here is that we need to stick to the rules because they're there to help us they're not there to limit us we can keep a close eye on our trading positions we can spread our risk and find a balance between maintaining liquidity and withdrawing our profits there's a number of things that we can do while there is a progression ladder allowing us to open more positions as our profits rise it is not mandatory for us to scale up. If we see an opportunity, we can work into a position within our restrictions, but if we don't feel comfortable scaling up, we don't have to scale up. While the promise of those short-term profits does seem tempting, we want to remember that it's a marathon. It's not a sprint, and the idea here is to do this for the long run, not for the short run. In trading, everything doesn't always go right. Sometimes our emotions get the best of us, and perhaps we get a little overzealous with a particular position, and we perhaps drop below the trailing drawdown, or break any of the other rules that we said must be adhered to with the funded trading account. What happens? Well, we lose our funded trading account, and we don't want this to happen, so it's strongly encouraged that we pay attention at all times and adhere to the rules. They're relatively simple, there's not many of them, and overall, they're meant to help you, not hurt you. But if you lose your account, does that mean you're done trading forever? No, it does not. The way you acquire the account in the first place by passing the Gauntlet Mini can be done to acquire a new funded trading account. The purpose behind this is because it will show us that whatever reason that caused you to lose the account is not a determining factor in your overall trading process. If you can go through the gauntlet mini experience again and continue to hold steadfast the rules and pass again, the proprietary trading firm would be more than happy to connect you with more trading capital. So if you do blow up your account, the reality is it will be closed, but it is not the end of the world and you can find a path back to redemption. In order to stay safe and make sure that we don't blow up our account or have our funded account taken away from us, these are the exact things that we want to follow and pay attention to. We don't want to reach or dip below our daily loss limit. This is pretty simple. It's a predefined limit based on your account size, and we don't want to fall below this limit. Next, we don't want to exceed the maximum position size. Once again, this is going to be a predefined amount based on our account value. And also, we want to make sure that we are trading in the improved hours, which means if we trade outside, this is kind of worded strange, if we trade outside the approved hours, that can have our account taken away from us. So we want to make sure that we are trading inside the approved hours. So just trade during the hours of open exchange trading. That is essentially what that means. Then we don't want to reach or dip below our trailing drawdown. We've already talked about this. It's going to be an amount that is going to be specific to your, spe your account size that you decide to open. We don't want to fall below that number. And once we get deep into the profits, we won't even realize that this is a thing to begin with. The exceeding progression ladder limits is a way to have our account closed as well, and that means we are exceeding the maximum position size for our account. So these two go hand in hand. And then the unscheduled absences of five consecutive trading days will result in our account being terminated. And yes, I did say five consecutive trading days, so we can think of these as business days to a degree. It means if you have gone away for five consecutive trading days and you have not notified the proprietary trading firm, they can view this as reason to close your account as they view it as an inactive trader. And that is it, folks. If we pay attention to the rules that we talked about in this video and we hold steadfast on whatever strategy that we use to pass the gauntlet mini, then we're on a good track and a high chance of finding success as we continue with our trading career. Remember, the rules that we have are not just here to help the proprietary trading firm that's funding you. They're here to help you. They're risk management rules. They're there to make sure that we're not overexposing ourselves or the trading firm's money. If we can't find profit without being unnecessarily risky, then chances are we probably want to reevaluate being a trader to begin with. But until next time, folks, thank you for joining me as always. It's always a pleasure to do these videos, so please make sure you click like and subscribe down below so I can keep coming out with content for you all out there. 
But I will see you soon. Happy trading, everybody. Happy hunting, and good luck on your Gauntlet Mini.